Hello, thank you for tuning in to The Math Guy. Today we'll be looking at logarithms and continuously compounded interest. Our first problem is what we see up here. Uh, we have this conversion factor. This deals with logarithms. We're told the log base b of r equals t is the same thing as b to the t power equals r. This is what we actually use to convert an exponent, such as what we have here, to a logarithm, or a logarithm, which we have here, back to an exponent. So either of those two things can be transferred from one to the other by using this conversion factor. So we can go through, and what we want to do here is convert this exponent into a logarithm. So the way we do this, we simply find out what are values of b, t, and r are, and then plug them into our other conversion factor. So we have an exponent, which is the same as b to the t power equals r. So we look, b is 3. They match up, so b equals 3. t is the same thing as 5, which because they match up. And r is the same of 243. So we do b, t, and r. We can convert these into a logarithm by using the fact that log base b of r equals t. Well, we have log base b, when we know that b is 3, so we plug that in for b. Of r, well, we know that r is 243, so we plug that in, equals t. Well, t is 5, so we plug it in. So we have an exponent of 3 to the fifth power equals 243. This is the same as log base 3 of 243 equals 5. They're equivalent. They're the same thing. We can do the same process for taking a logarithm and turning it into an exponent. We know that log base b of r equals t. So if we look, we know that b equals 3, r equals 729, and t equals 6. So we can go through and convert this over to b to the t equals r. So b is 3, so we plug that in right there. t we know is 6, and r we said was 729. So we end up by taking logarithm of, three, of base 3 of 729 equals 6. We can rewrite this as 3 to the 6th equals 729. It's the same equivalent formula. It's just rewritten. It's a, it looks a little bit different than the last one. In our next problem, we want to go through and find out what this value of x stands for. We have this logarithm right here. We want to go through and convert this into an exponent so we're able to find out what the value of x is. So in order for us to do this, we have log base b of r equals t. So we want to pull out what our values of b, r, and t. We want to pull out those values. Well, if we look, b is the same as 6, so b equals 6. r is the 1,679,616. And t is simply our value of x. So we fill all this information in, and we turn it into an exponent. So we have b to the t power equals r. B is 6, raised to the t power, well t is x, equals r, which is 1,679,616. So there's many ways we can go through and do this. If you have a power table, you can actually go through and find out which power of 6 equals this 1,679,616. If it's a perfect power, you're golden. It's on that list, as long as your list goes high enough. If not, you have to fall back on some guessing and checking, unless you actually know this power mentally in your head. If you do, even better. But I admit, I don't know it. So I'm going to go through and do some guess and check. Um, the best way to start, just pick some number. I'm going to say 6 to the fifth power. On my calculator, I'll type in 6 to the fifth, and I'll see what I get. Well, 6 to the 5th is equal to 7,776. Uh, 
that's a little bit of a ways off. About 1.6 million off. That's nearly not too close. So let's try something more like 6 to the 7th power. Type into your calculator 6 to the 7th power. We get an answer of 279,936. Well, that's a little bit closer, but if you look, it's still about 1.4 million off. We're getting closer. We made a big bump here in raising our power by two. So let's just bump it up by one. We'll do six to the eight. Type into your calculator, 68th power, we get 1,679,616. If we look, the numbers are the same. So we have six to the X equals that number. 1,679,616. 68th power equals 1,679,616. This tells us that 6 to the x is equal to the 6 to the 8th, which tells us that x equals 8. Our third problem today reads, determine the number of payments of a loan if the present value of the loan is $2,000, the future value of the loan is $6,000, and it is compounded quarterly at a rate of 6%. If we want to find the total number of payments, it's represented by a form that looks like this. Capital N. Capital N is the total number of payments. It's usually found by taking lowercase n, multiplying it by t. It's the same thing as n times t, lowercase n times t. So capital N equals the ln of FV over PV all over the ln of 1 plus r over n. Now, this problem tends to be a bit of an issue depending on how your calculator is set up. If you don't have a calculator that has an ln button, you can do this problem a little bit differently. It still gives the same exact answer, but you can make it look like this by using a basic log on your calculator. You can use log of fv over pv all over the log of 1 plus r over n. You can use either one of these two formulas. They'll work out the same, you get the same value of capital N for this problem. Whether it's this problem, a problem down the road, or a problem that I can make up right here in the spot that looks just like this with different numbers, it will work out. It's the same formula all and all through. So, for this problem we're actually just going to work with the first one that I put up here, which is right there. So we will go through and start filling in what we know. Well, we need to know FV, PV, R, and N. So we need to go through and pull this information out of our problem. We look through, it says that the present value is $2,000, so PV equals 2,000. It says the future value is 6,000, so FV equals 6,000. And it's compounding quarterly, so lowercase n equals 4 at a rate of 6%. Well, 6% is a decimal, the same as 0 0.06. So we can fill in everything we have from here. So, we simply take and start rewriting it as n equals the ln of FV over PV, which is 6,000 over 2,000, all over the ln of 1 plus R over N. Well, R is 0 0.06. N is 4, so we have our formula filled in with our information. Now from here we just go through and start breaking everything down. We leave the LNs go for now. We can't really take care of them until everything inside those parentheses is simplified to one number. So we do 6,000 divided by 2,000, which is very simple, it's 3. We have 1 plus 0.06. Divided by 4, what well, we take on our calculator, do 0 0.06 divided by 4, we get 0 0.015. So we can simplify it down from there a little bit more now, too. Capital N equals the ln of 3, which we'll let go until we have our denominator taken care of. We have the ln of 1 plus 0 0.015. 1 plus 0 0.015 is the same as 1.015. So now we can go through on our calculator and take care of those pesky LNs. So on our calculator, you can do LN of 3. When you type into your calculator, LN of 3, you should get 1.099. For our denominator, you can type in LN of 1.015. 1.015 is 
you should get 0 0.015. That just happens to be a coincidence. It doesn't always work out that way. And our last thing to find out what capital N is, we simply do some division. So do 1.099 divided by 0 0.015, and we will get an answer of 73.27. Okay? So let's say we're going to have 73.27 payments. Well, you really can't have 0.27 of a payment because you're either going to make a payment or you're not. So we always round these answers up. Whether it's 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.8, you always round it up. So we round this up to 74 payments. Our last problem for today is one of my favorite types of problems. It uses one of my favorite formulas of, of all time, which is A equals P times E to the RT power. This is used for any time you have a problem that says it's con compounded continuously or continuously compounded. This formula is one of my favorites because it reminds me of shampoo. Pert. All right, so we go through some of this information is things we need to pull out. Some of it is just a different button on our calculator. So if we look, A, that's the amount that we're going to have after it's compounded. So that's going to be our final answer. That's what we want to find in this problem. P, this is just like all the other times we had any value of P. It was our principal, the amount of money that we had. This is going to be the same as how much we deposited in the bank, which is $5,000. E, this is a little button on your calculator, the same as the number 2.18. So this is actually just a button on your calculator. So don't worry about it. It's easy just to use that button because it takes care of everything else you have to do for you. So we also need to know R and T, which are just like the last times we had R and T. R is your rate, T is the number of years. So it says that it's 3.5%. So R is 3.5%. 3.5% as a decimal is 0 0.035. And it says after one year. So T equals 1. We have all the information. We plug everything we have into our formula. So A equals P, which is 5,000, times E, which I said, just leave as E. It's just a button on your calculator. It's easier because it gives you a more distinct answer than what I just gave you as an estimate for that number. Raised to the 0 0.035 power times 1. So we start going through and breaking things down as at one step at a time. A equals 5,000 times E. Well, 0 0.035 times 1 is the same as 0 0.035. We go through. We simplify that down. We now take care of any exponents we have. So we have A equals, we take and leave 5,000 as it is. We find the button E on your calculator. If you ever need, ever need help with that, you feel free to contact me. Ask someone else, some of your friends might know how to do it, but it's usually located near the button for your LN that we used in the last problem. So we go through, we type in E, we raise that to the 0 0.035 power. We get an answer of 1.036. Our last step to get our final answer, 5,000 times 1.036. Do that in multiplication, we get 500. $5,180. Okay? The more decimal places you have right here, the more exact your final answer is going to be. But for this problem, $5,180 is pretty accurate for me. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to check back again soon for more videos by me, The Math Guy.